I've been self-employed now for over six months. And the thing about being self-employed is it can be hard to even know where to start. It's hard to know what the tools are that you need. And even if you are aware of tools, it's hard to know what to pick. And so because I'm a programmer and a bit of a nerd, I want to talk about my portfolio of tools that I use in my work as a self-employed software engineer. My hope is that maybe you pick up a few tools that you didn't know existed that could be helpful to you, or just to share knowledge about what I found helpful. I wanna talk about three major buckets, and those are finance, content, and code. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let's start with finance. I won't belabor it too much because I just made a video on a similar note about how to set up the back office of your company or LLC. And I talked a little bit about these tools in that video. So with that said, for my bookkeeping, I use a template from a company called Bench that offers accounting services for people like me, but I don't use them for my bookkeeping. I use a template that they put out for free. That's been super helpful and it just helps me to see what is my net income so that I can pay my estimated taxes because as a self-employed person in the US, I have to pay estimated taxes. And so this template just helps me to do that. And for my business banking, I use this company called Bluevine, which is awesome. It's a completely online bank. They send you a debit card. It's very straightforward and easy, and I've loved working with them. By the way, there will be links to everything below. So if something piques your interest, go ahead and check that out. Let's talk about content. My content looks a few different ways. I have a newsletter. I have a personal website. I have a podcast. I have this YouTube channel. And so I need a few different sets of tools to help me produce these things. So let's talk about podcasting. For podcasts, I use Squadcast to record and set calendar invites and invite people to the recording session. And I use Buzzsprout to distribute the episodes to all the various platforms. Those are both great. I would recommend both of them. Let's talk about email. So for my email list, I use ConvertKit and I love ConvertKit. I think they're awesome. I think they're very well aligned for creators. In fact, all of their branding and the way they talk about themselves is about creators. And I found them to be really helpful and that they have a lot of features that, for example, a MailChimp doesn't have more fine grain filtering and sorting and tagging and segmenting your list. They have React components that I use on my website. They have all kinds of forms and landing pages that you can build and just all kinds of great stuff that I found really helpful. Highly recommend ConvertKit if you're thinking about starting an email list. And the great thing about it is that it's free if you're under a thousand subscribers. I sell a few info products and for that I use Gumroad. I could use ConvertKit Commerce, but I've just started with Gumroad and so decided to continue with them. They're great. They are a platform for hosting really any kind of digital asset and selling that, but they also have memberships and subscriptions. And I think it's awesome. So if you're looking for a solution for hosting and selling a digital good, I think Gumroad is great. By the way, I don't get affiliates from any of these. I'm just talking about them because I think that they're great. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's talk video and graphic design. So for storing video files, I just use good old Google Drive with a paid subscription so that I can upload lots and lots of video footage. I don't edit many in my own videos anymore, but when I did and when I still have to, I use Final Cut Pro 10 on the Mac. For B-roll, I use Storyblocks and I think they've been great. They have all kinds of interesting footage and templates. And I think it's been a good choice so far. I pay $300 a year for it and I think it's pretty worth it. And last, but certainly not least, and maybe best of all, is the tool that I use for graphic design and that is Canva. Canva is amazing. It's a multi-billion dollar company and it does something that a lot of people needed and not everybody knew that they wanted. And that is, it makes graphic design super easy. Where otherwise you would have had to have learned something like Photoshop, now it is accessible and democratized for everybody to have those skills to do interesting graphic design. So with Canva, that's what I use for doing the thumbnails for these videos, for example. We also use it for podcast photo art. I've even used it for my resume and it's well worth the $10 that I pay a month for it. I think it's worth its weight in gold. And so if you take nothing else from this video, then check Canva out. And lastly, let's talk about code. So my IDE is VS Code. I think VS Code is kind of the standard at this point. I know a few people that still use Sublime or Atom, but VS Code is incredible and that's what I use. For domains, I use Google Domains and I like Google Domains. They're out of beta now and I just like that they're integrated with all my other Google information and I think the interface is nice and easy to use. For web hosting, for my personal website and other side projects, I use Netlify. 
I had something that were a bit more complicated, I might go with a Heroku, but Netlify has been great. They have all kinds of interesting developer experience things like writing your own actions, which are really serverless functions under the hood. They have great deployment pipelines and overall I've been really happy with them. And last but not least, for source control and hosting code, I use Git and GitHub. Those are really the standard options, so there's nothing special there. All right, thanks for watching to the end. I hope this was helpful, and if not helpful, uh, like I said at the beginning, I hope it's just interesting to maybe nerd out on some of these things. I like knowing what people use in their portfolio of technologies, and so I hope that you liked hearing about mine. If you like this video, then you might like my channel where I make videos about software engineering and self-employment, so consider sticking around. But regardless, thanks so much for being here. Remember, stay hungry, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.